So I'll start with the photo. Uh, this is the Aspelin prison camp uh, just outside Bergen. It's uh, one of the prison camps for Norwegian prisoners uh, during the Second World War. There, uh, it was uh, not a, a, a not a strictly a labor camp uh, or a, a termination camp, but also a transit camp for Norwegian prisoners staying here, but also going to Germany. Um, as you can see, it's in a pretty cold area of uh, Bergen. They actually placed it uh, uh, in a geographical sort of pothole where it's two degrees colder uh, than uh, the rest of the Bergen area. So it's pretty ingenious and evil. Um, this is the last one remaining uh, after the Second World War. Uh, and I was approached by a human rights organization and the museum of the camp uh, with this question, how to ensure that the memory of the camp does not fade away. So we tried to make an uh, educational LARP on human rights and history, figuring out how to make the memory of this camp live on. Uh, we ran it 15 times between 2007 and 2009. And this is a picture of uh, uh, the LARP in, in, uh, in action. Uh, here are some participants. Uh, as you can see, we've made some choices that are not strictly time specific. Uh, we used the orange boiler suits uh, in order to have the educational uh, point of, uh, well, seeing the line stretch through history. And we talked a lot about Guantanamo in the, in the after work. Uh, but I'll, I'll return to that later, just to give you a little feel of how it was. Um, this LARP uh, in this program uh, relates to the, the faders' openness and player pressure. Um, uh, Bjarke and Signe, will, or Signe and Bjarke, will be talking about the, uh, those afterwards. So you can keep this one in mind when they talk about that. Uh, but, uh, and it also relates to the talks, uh, LARPs as a part of a learning process. For, uh, Miriam, is she here already? No. Oh yeah, there she is. She'll be having that talk later today. Uh, and she'll be talking more extensively about a couple of things I, I mentioned as well. Uh, and also about the accountability in EduLARP, which I will be having myself tomorrow. So. Uh, just as an indication, uh, we try to max out on the openness fader uh, to give the participant as uh, much information as possible in order for them to, get, uh, to be able to make a choice that was informed. Uh, and the player pressure is towards the max. We didn't have any physical uh, uh, violence or those kind of pressures, but it's still a lot of pressures on, on a lot of pressure on people that don't necessarily choose to be in the LARP by themselves. So what did we do? Uh, the LARP is obviously a part of a process, and I've put up a diagram for you. Mm, nice diagram. <laughs> uh, and it goes like this. We started with the pre-work, then we had the LARP, we had after work, and we had the evaluation. And since we ran it 15 times, but also for our own uh, sake and the participants' sake, we had uh, the evaluation run into the pre-work again, and then we started over. I've taken out a few choice points. Uh, there are more, but not to like uh, fill it with super tiny 0.8 uh, uh, text with all the things. I chose a couple of them. For the pre-work, um, we have very close cooperation with the teacher, both in the teaching material, but also in preparing the, uh, the participants for what they were going to uh, be a part of. We also had a, an extensive lecture on the topic of prisons and, uh, uh, and human rights. And we had, again, a lot of information. Uh, Jok talked about informed consent in her safety talk. And basically, we wanted all our participants to be able to know what they said yes to, and to know what they said no to. And uh, um, we tried at least to uh, keep it open so that people could actually choose between the yes and the no. Then uh, the uh, actual LARP, we were in an actual prison camp. Uh, we used the orange boiler suits and numbering for teaching purposes. Uh, and we had trained guards. How many, uh, can I just do a raise of hand? How many of you have, uh, have uh, heard of the uh, Stanford prison experiment? So most of you, okay. So um, I'll mention it briefly then tomorrow in the accountability, but we had uh, trained guards for all the Stanford prison, uh, uh, prison uh, experiment reasons. Also, we had a couple of no-goes. 
no physical violence, no sensory deprivation, so no blindfolding and no earmuffs. Yes? Sensory deprivation, what does that mean? Um, me meaning removing one of your senses. So a blindfold would be removing your eye senses, right? So you're depriving people, you're taking away those senses. Thank you, Geta. And no isolation was a sort of our three key no-goes when, uh, when we went. We also had a couple of things. Uh, Jok talked about it in the, stab the Don't Stab the Passant uh, lecture. Um, we, I'll go back, actually, <coughs> real fa fast and see. You can see ever so faintly that they have at least three layers of clothes underneath the boiler suits. <laughs> Uh, again, um, that's a consideration in uh, what, what, what would they have from teaching value if they were freezing cold and couldn't really concentrate. We also had food during the LARP. It wasn't tasty food, uh, but it was nutritious food uh, and it was warm food. Um, we also uh, split all the participants into uh, smaller groups. Uh, each group had one guard uh, in order to not have any unsupervised uh, uh, participants. Uh, we also made it clear, uh, you know, this camp is in the middle of nowhere. So um, we basically said to them, if you flee this camp, that's not the point. You're not supposed to win in this game. Uh, but if you flee, we won't come and get you. Uh, more as a sort of a statement uh, uh, that you, you obviously can, you can do that because we're not manned for that, uh, that kind of action. Uh, but we also had a guard uh, with all the participants at, at all times, in, just in case of emergency. And we had the off-game warm room with hot chocolate uh, and uh, buns and yes, just uh, love and care. For the after work, uh, we had an extensive debrief of the participants. We had hot beverages and food. Uh, never underestimate the, the effect of hot beverages and food for cold participants when they've been uh, uh, out in cold. Yes, Frederike. Oh, yes, uh, 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 hot drinks. Hot drinks. Sorry, thank you. Uh, and then also, uh, and that's a, a, a safety uh, for the uh, organizing team, we had a, an extensive debrief for the guards every time. Um, I think uh, there are many people here uh, that can tell you about those kind of things that is actually kind of taxing and, and, and hard for the guards to be in those kind of roles because they're asked to go out of their own comfort zone. So even if they're trained, they should have a proper debrief. Now I've put the evaluation. Uh, evaluation and after work can sort of go, they seep into each other, but uh, that's how it goes. We had an extensive classroom follow-up uh, where we, uh, uh, two to six weeks after the, uh, after the LARP, we had a visit in the, in the classroom where we had a whole curriculum that we went through with some exercises and discussed the effects of, uh, of the LARP. Um, again, close cooperation with the teacher. And last but not least, a critical review of our own performance. Like always asking the uncomfortable questions Okay, did we go over some boundaries? Should we reel ourselves in? How do we talk about this? How do we do it next time? This I will leave uncommented. Uh, I'll just do like this and say thank you for uh, listening because I've already used my time. But check it out on the internet.